Just want to thank Serge for that presentation. I'm also a big believer in those small year games. That is just, you can do it for any level of kids. They have to compete, they have to battle. There's so many skills that they're working on. Uh, so I really encourage you to uh, incorporate those type of smaller games in, in, in your practices. Um, also, just uh, want to let you know that the practice schedules will be out here next week. And uh, once we get the practice schedule to you guys, we'll, all, we'll then send a list of available ice time. Uh, I really encourage you this spring to look to take additional <coughs> practice time. Uh, we get a good rate on ice in the spring. It's great value for the families. It might cost them seven or eight dollars each for an extra practice. As you know, our kids don't get enough quality practice time in the winter. <coughs> One or two hours a week is just doesn't do it. Yeah. I would say that on average, our prospect series teams, if I look throughout the province, they're probably practicing at 15 hours during the spring. Eight hours including the registration fee, but they always usually take seven or eight. Triple A series is probably 20 to 25. So again, just a heads up that, uh, that you'll have the opportunity to uh, schedule extra practice time. But always check with your parents first. We don't want to make them think we're nickel and dime them. Oh, it's an extra this, extra that. Uh, but uh, I would encourage you to get, get the extra practice time. Uh, also, one more thing. Uh, in the summer, uh, we run our summer hockey camps. We have great camps, elite camps, stick handling, goal scoring. We have a battle camp, which is my favorite week. We have a defenseman camp. We do another great camp where it's half day skills and Lloyd Watling Band does skating with them the other half day. Um, if you're interested in joining us, and I look around here, there's several of you that work at our summer hockey camps. Uh, it works like the spring, you would get a full scholarship. Typically the coaches, you'll work two to three sessions a day, half a day, where your kid's there all day. It's a great experience. Uh, I'm on the ice or rolling all the time with you guys. So I think it's also a good experience uh, to work with us. So just keep that in mind. If you're interested, you have a week or two weeks to work in the summer camps here in Moncton, just pop me an email and I'll send you the different options. Having said that, Dave, I think I already introduced you. Uh, so uh, he's done a great job with our goaltending program. Uh, so I present Dave Kennedy. Good evening. <laughs> I'll be a little bit more sarcastic than Roland here, but uh, yeah, I just want to make sure. Can you see me? And uh, can you? Before I turn uh, to yeah. Yeah. About that. Yeah. Okay, I screwed up the manuals, but you know, I wanted to make them check. Okay, we need bilingual, so it's you can see that Manuel is written in French and it's coaching. So coaching Manuel. Okay, just a little bit of check on the front. We wanted to hit both sides. It's totally my fault. Okay, so I'll get that out of the way. Uh, thanks for coming tonight. I know it's, uh, you know, Charlie's talked about it, but I always enjoy coming here. If some of you know me, I, I don't shut up. So uh, I'll get right to it. But I'm very fortunate to have worked uh, these three teams this year. Obviously with Bathurst, uh, Agnabri, and we'll see Moncton with the girls. Love the female hockey side, working with the female goalies. So I get to dip in the female side too, which is, it's helped. A lot more patient. And for those that work with them, know that, you know, it's a little bit more fun, I find. Don't tell that to my Bathurst guys. But uh, Moncton Midget AAA this year was our first year. One thing we tried to do uh, with Moncton is add development sessions, which the Flyers program never had. They had about 10 minute practices uh, with their goalies at the start. It was junk, okay? And the goaltending parents were starting to say, hey, we're gonna go to prep schools. You guys are doing nothing for goalies. And we're gonna lead into that because I'm gonna give you guys resources today how to help your goalies. But the way we did it with Midget AAA was add two bi-weekly goalie practice for an hour. Okay, we're going to do something. Our two goalies finished on top of the league. Okay. Proof is in the pudding there, so you need to work with them. Okay. Now tonight, we're going to go over, I want to try to keep it simple. I think there's a lot, we have all resources now. We can go online, find a lot of stuff, but you know, it's just when I sit with these, the other Q goalie coaches and we talk, we see these guys putting out aerial angles and these funky words and we're like, what is this stuff? Okay, it's complicated for us. And when I talk, right now I've got a new goalie in Bathurst, okay, so I work a lot with the St. Louis Blues on Fitzpatrick's development. We're on the same page as the guys in the NHL here. So somebody else is just, I don't know if it's a marketing ploy, but you know, fancy words catch people. It is not that complicated, okay? It comes back to the same things that Roland Serge did. It starts with skating. So I'll go with four rules just to keep it simple. Then I'll talk about a drill build. And uh, Roland didn't talk about this side of it. 
this winter, but uh, Roland was a part-time goalie coach this year, so if Roland can do it, okay, nobody has excuses, so we'll get into that. Uh, four things that are important for me. First one would be footwork, okay, skating, 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 skating. We've kind of, and I see some of the guys that are out on the ice with me at uh, various minor hockey clinics. We do Moncton, Dieppe, Riverview, Petty, Shreya, Kepale. Uh, we service Bathurst this year, Nakawick, uh, Pictou County, uh, Bath, anyways. Um, and we try to do an emphasis when I'm doing the novice initiation, a lot of skating, a lot of skating. Edge work is as important for the goalies. Um, and if anybody saw our Titans play, I, I say to my guy, I have two six foot three goalies right now. And Evan Fitzpatrick stays on his feet almost all the time, okay? He's not sliding around all the time. Why? Because, well, he understands he needs to, to stay on his feet. But footwork, really strong, really powerful. It, it is the essence of everything. So skating, edge work, pivots, shuffle, T-push. That's the first thing, okay? For some goalies that just want a butterfly slide all over the place, you got zero control going on there. Footwork is more important. Now, I had a gentleman ask me a little bit earlier, we, we said, my goalie's always sliding. What's hard at their age, it's faster to slide than to shuffle, right? My garage at that, I just throw myself, hey, I'm going to get over there faster when I'm in novice than you want me to shuffle with my little legs here, okay? But when you get older, that's one step you're there. It's retarded to, to, you know, to slide and then get back up. So we have to breach, you know, if we're working with initiation to major, junior, find the fine line. But it's also communication explaining. I tell the kids, I say, yeah, it is. Because, you know, he thinks I'm dumb. He's like, hey, man, this is a lot faster than, you know, skating. So I have to tell the kid, hey, I understand you're sliding. Why you're sliding, right? Get on your feet. Get on your feet. Very important. So a couple of footwork drills I want to show you guys. i got to switch to my iPhone because the video has not uh, wanted to work with me here. So... One of them was two pucks, okay? And I take a lot of my drills. These are all resources that you guys will find. This is, I'm all about these guys in Czechoslovakia, okay, for the last two years. I've been taking everything, okay? And I use it major junior, I use it in my clinics. I find it's very comparable to what we do, but they don't overcomplicate the things. So I have no clue what they're saying, okay? I have no clue, right? I, nor do I care, because it's as similar as what I do and what I teach and what we get. Simple drills for you. I'll show you one to start here, okay? And of course, I know, I felt good about it. Very simple, okay? It's adding a C-cut so that they're not bobbing up and down going across. The biggest thing I have a problem with young goalies, they bob up and down, because they haven't gotten the concept that they didn't need to go to power skating for the most part, but the good ones will know that, hey, my leg can go like this. If I'm gonna shuffle, I don't want this to bug out on this here. Okay? And there's different ways of doing this. Now, this is not complicated. Okay? Good skating drill. And I've used that one recently. I did it with my major junior guys. While the other guys were skating around, that's what we did. And you'll have uh, all these again. I think I've even drew them in our uh, drill book that we'll go over a little bit after. Different ways of doing it. Okay? But they're easy and all it is is a very confined space. I think I got good at doing this when I was working with Charlie with the winter skills. I get a little corner. Well, I had to find ways to keep people busy in a small space, okay? And it's possible. So the other one, uh, so C cuts through the pucks, try to keep your shoulders level. So like I was saying, that their knees are bent. Some kids will go too wide. What happens when I'm too wide? Where am I going? I'm probably going to slide, okay, because I can't stay on my feet. And that's, so you'll see that with a lot of young goalies. Breakaway comes and, it, and, it's, and then they just fly on one of the two sides instead of being able to do a rotation, <laughs> which we will talk about in a second. So um, I often say to just sit. I had Lloyd Watling, like he coached me Adam A. So like I had the basics of edges at a pretty, age, a pretty early age, but it, it's just sitting, being comfortable. Uh, power versus butt wiggle. I often see the goalies come out and it's like, guys, just trying to just, uh, I tell them it's not butt wiggling out here, okay? We're trying to build power. I need you to get better at being able to do a C-cut, 
not to wiggle your butt and how fast you got to the blue line. I don't care. So when you get older, you're going to end up being, when you're six foot three, like Evan Fitzpatrick, imagine if he butt wiggled for years. No power is being produced after that. Uh, my other drill triangle, very simple. Um, what we're trying to do is rotation. I'll talk a little bit about, you're going to hear that word with me. Okay? And what we mean by rotation is that I'm not just flying over here. I'm, there's a process, I'm looking, I'm rotating my upper body, and then I'm going towards something, so I finish square. Simple drill to get that, okay? and you can add proper leg recovery, etc., whatever you want. Okay? So this one, the, the point is they have to face the outside the whole time. So for example, this one they were down. So I'm not even doing a little bit of skating, I'm doing backside edge, but you could do it with T-pushes. The point is, is that they always face the outside. So if I'm going in that puck, well I have to look, I've got to rotate my upper body and come here. I can't just, you know, not finish square. Okay, and that one's a great one to do. Uh, I do it a lot at the start of beginning of seasons, get my goalies back into it, okay, get back into that, that motion. So a great one, I think I have that one in your list too. And you'll have access to a lot of these videos as well. Okay, the save process. I think the same process, everything that has to do with your eyes, very important, okay? Following your rebound, it has to do with my eyes. If my eyes aren't following my puck, I'm probably not going to follow my rebound. Stick use, same process, okay? I make my stick safe. Uh, and box control, which is a complicated thing. Like, I still haven't used box control, the major junior. We talk about it. They understand that the net that they're covering is a lot, the net is bigger than the actual box that the puck is creating. But that's once again, do we, like a novice kid who can't do a proper C cut, we're bringing out elastics and look, I, I'm sorry, he can't skate. He can't get in front of the puck. Uh, if we go back, save process timeline. So the first thing, recognition of play, is it a two on one, is it a one on no? Okay, where do I need to be for my starting depth? I have to be my shot prepared. Am I in my stance or okay, I've got a light glide. And I'm just going through it fast and I, we could go for two hours, okay? But I just want to kind of simplify, okay? Uh, we have to read the shot release, you know. One thing with the shot release that we forget, and I try to, you know, I went with, through this with Fitzpatrick. We played PEI last night, and I texted him after. I said, last shot hit the post. I said, was that tip? He said, no, no, I thought he was going, and he, he said, I thought he was a rookie, so I thought he was going short side. It's the worst answer I've ever gotten, I think, this year from him. So clearly he didn't use his eyes and didn't follow anything, and he was just he was guessing, which is scary. But shot release, so... Something to think about, if I'm shooting high, I'm going to finish up top. It's the same way we, we teach kids how to shoot. And if I'm going uh, to the, let's say the goalie is a uh, blocker side, okay? If I'm going blocker side, the release that the goalie is going to read is the blade. That blade, we're going to finish this way. There's no way I'm shooting there unless I do a little wrister. So if they're in position, because they have strong skating, they can then read the shot release, okay? and then they're going to respond with the right save. Is it a low shot? Is it a high shot? But if you're not doing your sequence, let's say you're just prepared, you didn't mind the release, and you just make any save. That's the guy going down all the time who's not reading anything. Okay, Gato Chatel all the time. Um, puck impact, okay, puck hit me. Where is it going now? Post save response, okay, it hit my stick, the puck is in the corner, what do I do? I got to follow it. And it, what happens after? I got to repeat. It's just the same process every time. But often if I'm evaluating my goalies and I see, okay, he's late. Well, somewhere in the same process timeline, that's where the error was. He was late, didn't get to his shot, wasn't able to get set. Therefore, he wasn't able to read the release. The impact, the puck, he couldn't get his stick on it at the right time. Bad rebound. So there is a process. Reading the play behind the net, shooters, you know, is it a left-handed or right-handed shot? I always do that one because, you know, I had Louis for years, but he forgot to tell me this one. I thought it was pretty important, okay? And even major junior guys, like, when I got Evan over, I kind of, I thought this guy kind of knew it all. He was drafting the NHL, and, okay, I'm still a, a, a younger guy. I'm not allowed to say that. <coughs> okay. And uh, when he got to me, I, I said, I was kind of overwhelmed that he was going to, you know, know everything, but first thing I talked to him, and I did a Jim Fleming stick drill, which they make the goalies go back to the post every time, and they put, the, the shooter stays in the middle, but they put the stick at four different places, so forehand, backhand, and every time the goalie leaves the post, he's got to check, okay, I'm pushing to the stick blade, but the guy never moves, okay, goes back to the other post, well, okay, the, the stick moved, but the guy didn't move, 
And that's something we forget sometimes, right? We're square to that shooter. What's shooting? Is this thick blade? I know we're going to bring it in a little bit here, okay? But I still need to know, is it left or righty? If, uh, you know, if the guy's back door here, how important is it to know if I'm going right to my post or I'm going to my corner of my crease? It's huge, okay? And that comes back to awareness. So reading the play, behind the net, shooter stick, screen traffic, communication, okay? All falls in the same sector. The mental side. Last year, uh, for those that were here, we did it on goalie anxiety, talking about importance of failure and things like that. If anybody wants that one, because our, our Jason Clements that we talked about, he actually came in and I said, hey, sit down. He had a problem with one of his goalies. Trust me, if you want to talk about somebody who had problems with their goalies, I've got hours to talk to you, okay? And it wasn't, you know, it was all stuff that wasn't because of me, wasn't really because of him, uh, but it made me grow as a coach. And now the mental side is 90% probably, okay? Especially for goalies. And we talked about it, me and Roland today. We're alone in our nets the whole time, okay? A lot of opportunity for negative thoughts, right? And it's, we're in that society now. We can talk about mental health and things like that. But the focus, your reaction after a goal, uh, you know, do you remember to do your rotation every time, or do you do this? You know, that's that's a mental. You gotta, you know, focus, be ready. Uh, game debrief, uh, level of interest of the child. You know, is it him coming to the rink like this, and it's mom and dad forcing him, or is he ready to go? Uh, that can make a huge difference for a goalie. Okay, uh, the parents, and I say that just because of what I've, I've went through. Uh, social status, is it the kid who's got five sets of gear every year, and all he loves is to look good in his gear, you know, and mom and dad can get him all the training he wants, they're out there, okay, they make it to pretty high levels too, but they don't really uh, go after that, but they can get there, is it one of those guys you got to watch out for, and I've had a few, attitude, I'm not going to get in that one, that will be my presentation next year, okay, well, attitude, very important, yeah, 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 at my rate, yeah, for sure, okay, now we're going to get in the fun part, drill build, so these guys hit the, the exact points. Game situation, okay? We need to find a way to keep the kids engaged, okay? I can tell you when I was a goalie and they'd tell me just T-push, okay, on this drill you're gonna start on the post, okay, push to the angle and you're gonna get a shot. Okay, well, why the hell was I doing that? Okay, we need to communicate this and then I can go back. Once you're done here, what I want out of the drill bill is you can go back to your games and go, okay, remember we did that drill? It's similar to this, you know, we controlled our rebound or remember the drill we worked on, you know, okay, we're going to be a little bit better. And I do that with Fitzpatrick, okay, my two goalies and bathers. It's a constant we reminder of what we were, what we're working on, okay, is it shoulder checks, is it getting our feet set, keep it simple, okay. But the drill build will help you. And this is the same way that I would do it, okay. Start with a building on basics, either... Uh, you know, just using their gloves, using their stick, or their butterfly sucks. Well, they, they have to get up. They don't get up with the right leg. Start with a basic. Now add a purpose into it, okay? Well, okay, far side shots all the time when he gets up. Far side, he always gives a rebound, okay? Well, you know, and we'll go through some examples. Start with something where they work on a building on basic, and then it's a far side shot, and then you go back to the goalie and say, okay, we're working on two things, but it's important. You don't need to be a pro, okay? It's, it's just a little bit of common sense. Uh, communicate purpose is not to stop every shot in the drill, and I always didn't say it, right? I, I, when I go to New Glasgow, like I was there on Sunday night, and I told a kid, I said, I got a two-hour drive back to Moncton. There's no way I'm going to remember what happened here or how many goals you let in, but I'm going to remember if you got better in a half an hour, okay? And if that one's important, I'll say it. You know, the guys that are on the ice with me, I, I, I do it. For me, that's what my reward is, okay? It's, I need to feel after our sessions, if you've ever been a head instructor with a big group, you have a feeling after, okay, and it's a gut one. Either it was, okay, that went well, or you're like, eh, could have done a little bit better. Uh, and you have to keep it fun for them, okay? Goaltending is a, it's a tough position, so maybe you finish with a little game, or, you know, you do a two-puck drill, or rebound, or just something to, to have a little bit of more fun, okay? Because it's tough. And continuity in games. Follow up. Hey, we worked on that stick. Today you're going to get, you know, all the pucks are going to end up in the corner, okay? Focus. We worked on that in practice. It enables you guys as coaches for a follow-up, uh, which I've done with Pouliot and Bathurst for the first year, okay? Now he even answers, like, the media telling them, like, all these terms and things like that. But 
he would never come out for goalie practices, and Scott Monroe always told me that Rumble would always go out. So I was like, "Hey, Rumble does it. And he doesn't think Rumble's a very good coach." So he said, "Oh, I don't want to go out too." So now he comes out. Well, that built his relationship with the goalies, right? Some coaches, the head coaches, there. No, no, no. C'est ton problème. Okay. Well, trying to get the coach involved. Well, now he's into this, but he also has a relationship with these guys. Sometimes you don't even know your goalies because you're scared to talk to them. So, uh, we'll just do a drill build. So, I did recovery, okay? And that one's in your books, uh, I think in the goalie department, okay? So, building on basics, let's say number one, I started with proper leg uh, recovery. So, my dot is the goalie starting butterfly, okay? I got my shooter at the bottom of the circle, he could be at the dot, wherever, okay? He's just recovering up, setting his feet, and a shot. Well, what's the purpose? Well, maybe I need to, he can't stick the pucks in his chest. Well, I'm going to shoot them all in his chest and get them, try to get him to eat them. That's my pur purpose. Uh, and then, okay, I want to add a little bit, so I'm going to add the other goalie who's waiting. I'm going to add a screen now, okay? Same drill, same purpose. Shots in the chest, okay? It's going to be tough to get it through the screen. Maybe I can get a low one on this side. Or maybe I'm doing uh, shoulder saves, okay, through the screen. I'm just adding a little component. Recovery, screen, and timing. Well, then your other goalie, or if you have three sometimes, I don't think you guys will. Some of you only have one. Uh, or your assistant coach will now add timing. Now make the goalie get up and beat the pass in front of the screen. So you just start very simple, but think of a game situation. I know it's easy for me because I coach them. I, I just close my eyes and I, I, I look at the last goal that went in. Okay, it's an angle drive. What can I do with that? And that's seriously how I do my practices. Like I've got one tomorrow. Uh, you know, we're gonna do far side shots again with Evan, and he gets too wide on breakaways. So I already know what my purpose out of my drills I need to get out of Evan tomorrow. Game situation, then you can add, uh, you can maybe uh, the far side shot. So you're now there's not a pass, but this guy is gonna actively take the rebound. So the goalie needs to use his stick every time. But we're building on that same drill. At that same time, he got way better at his proper leg, or he got way better at his rotation, and I was working something else. Okay. Uh, the last one there, I think I've got T push out. He makes a save. Oh, well this time the rebound went up. It wasn't a pass. Okay, or the rebound is right here. I'm gonna make a pass up. Recover, set my feet, and uh, goalie through the screen. So it's just building on simple, okay? That one could have been a pass from the corner out. You're gonna see a couple of those, but on recoveries, anything where they start down, they look, they rotate, they get up with the proper leg. Okay? Most of you would know, but some of you don't, okay? If I'm going this way, I'm always gonna get up and push at the same time. If I get up with the not good leg, so this would be one, two, and then three, compared to one getting up and pushing. And it comes back, if you got the look, rotate, if you got the basics, the details, which is look, rotate, and push, you will be fine. Next one, tracking, so following a player, okay? Some, uh, you'll have a lot of your goalies will back up instead of shuffling sideways. They end up in the middle of their net like this, and then they're like, whoop, come back out. Well, you gotta work that stuff, okay? Um, so you do it the basic way, you're building on basics. I need to work either his shuffles or his T pushes. Uh, he's got to get his feet set or his uh, shoulder checks, he's not doing them. Or the save that he decides to do, when I shoot low and he shuffles, he's too lazy so he stands up. Okay? It, it happens. You have to target something but keep it simple. It's just a shooter, the goalie starting on the corner and the shooter going to, to, to one side. After that you can add a movement, make the goalie start in the middle of the net to the post. Then he's got to do a, maybe a shoulder check. Okay, my shooter's up here. Then T push out and same thing. All right, we're going to complicate it a little bit more. Now we're going to make a game situation. So we add the passer off the post, the little shuffle to follow my shooter. Oh, I can change my angle of my pass. Okay, make it from the other corner. Goalie comes out. Now he's got a T push and he's going to shuffle. So build off the basics into something. That's what we do. You Google NHL goalie drills, you're going to be bored because they're basic. Okay, it's uh, more guys trying to do a show that'll have all kinds of stuff going on. I don't, you know, it's, uh, it's to your discretion. Net play. This is a little bit tougher, okay, because this the way it's changed. We're now we've got RVH. My hips are screwed because of it. Okay, um, it's tough for you guys to teach that stuff. Okay, unless you have goalie gear and or that you want to stretch for half an hour so that torque in your hips, but. 
kind of boring. Um, but you still need to practice it, okay? Get pucks behind the net. Ha most of the game is happening for goalies anyways, okay? There's maybe what, it depends what team you're coaching to. Uh, not too many shots, but all the attack comes from the side, a one-on-one, -on -one. they're forcing everybody to the outside. Everything happens from on the outside, directed in the slot, okay? It's rare that guy's gonna win that one-on-one, -on -one. you're gonna have a breakaway maybe, okay? That he's gonna attack straight from here. It's gonna start from somewhere on the side, either a pass, etc. Keep that in mind, okay? Uh, so behind the net, so maybe I need to work on his butterfly slides. Maybe I need to work on his reverse vertical horizontal, which is what RVH is. So we used to do VH, which was like this on the post. Now we do RVH, so the other leg reverse VH, okay? That's where that comes from. Uh, maybe they have to just work their shuffle on the goal line with their head behind. Purpose, they gotta get a better post play. Maybe net drives. They're attacking us from the side every time and he backs up, backs up, and they score on the side, okay? Maybe it's wraparounds that he's bad, and then you can add a little bit of a game situation. So just start behind the net. Progress to maybe one side. Then you can do your one, two, three, four, just something simple with shuffles, because I still do it at the major junior. I do it with my girls, we do a midget triple A. We have to return the basics because they forget about them, okay? Um, maybe you're gonna do a walkout, maybe it's simple, just your, your coach behind. These are all game situations. They're a lot less boring than, okay, you're gonna do a, a movement here, okay, and we still have to do them, but I find the kids that we're coaching at younger ages, we have to find ways to engage them, okay? And keep the little game situation, but progress in your drills, then you can go back. Remember the first part of the drill, it was a wraparound, really had to be good on the post there. And, okay, now we've added the second element of the t bush. There's other examples there. You can do just RVH, so you can get just your goalie to start butterfly here. Your coach taps, the goalie finds a way to get back to the post in a shot. It's as simple as that. You need a little bit of an area, okay? All right, rotation, I'm huge on that. Okay, Brad knows that, right Brad? Okay. There you go, rotate. So, uh, and this is one of the biggest things that we changed with Fitzpatrick when he got the bathers. Okay, I think it made a difference for him. I'm not sure, but feeling confident about that one. Okay, the other kid is a the Adam A goalie out of Petticodiac. Okay, pretty good goalie, Jacob Duff. Okay, um, so I don't know which one I start with. Did I start with the older one or not? Anyway, you're gonna see a guy who's drafting the NHL and then an Adam goalie. Okay, tell me who does it better. So we'll go with Jake Duff first. So. Quite clear on here. I don't know why it's. Uh, <laughs> wet, See, I'm not clear as my. If not, I'll go find it in my videos. Here. All right, so Fitzy, okay. All we're doing is trying to get them to look and get square to that next puck, okay. Now, where he has trouble doing it, it's when he's going on that side. Last night against the Islanders, like that was his, that's the first thing I texted him. He had three breakaways and I said, man, your rotation was unbelievable. Just patient. And what he used to do was attack pucks. He'd go like this and he'd open up. And he's a big human being. And it was just to rotate. So well now we add a little bit of speed, but you see on that last one where his shoulders don't get on that new angle. So he's sliding like this, but that's the angle I need. So if I look, I rotate, I get that angle. That shot comes, I'll be square to the puck. So, that's Joey Paragonia, Wildcats well, guys, goalie coach told me that one. Nose and two gloves. I used to yell, look, rotate, push, the same thing. Nose and two, I'm just yelling it, okay? Nose and two gloves, that it all comes together. This is moving, this is moving. So there's different ways of trying to keep it simple, okay? But I'm not using fancy terms. There's probably some weird fancy term for this, right? Like, uh, Now, see if Mr. Duffman will work, because you gotta see uh, that there is, it doesn't do justice, but you see how he takes the time to look, rotate, and then push. Takes the time to look, rotate, and push. Just there, you can see where his shoulders are gonna be. I have nothing to say to that kid. I'm sure some of you have played him in games. He's, uh, he's not bad. Who's got him? Oh, Malcolm. There you go. 
Now he's gonna land 19 goals. <laughs> oh, this might have made it work here. And he has great deeds right there. Yeah, that was too good to be true. <coughs> so, rotation drill. <coughs> I do it. It's the first thing I did with Fitzpatrick, like I'm telling you. We got him, and it was like, this is what we need to do. I got Joe Murdaka from the Erie Otters. He went to the Memorial Cup the year before. I got two six foot three guys. The first thing we did was rotation. And I, they, now they come back to me and go, man, why did we not do this before? I don't know. Because Louis Gay has always been with it since I've been, you know, 10 years old. So I don't know why there's different stuff. I guess it gets boring working on the basics, but that's what got you there. So uh, rotation drill. So I put a couple of pucks on, on uh, so six pucks on the sides. I number them if you have a marker. If you don't, just put the pucks, okay? You are going to, you saw Evan go to number one. Then he's going to number two, which is about mid-crease. So <coughs> this is at these little 45 angle things. That's where you want him to be on number two. Then he goes post, post to post, and then recovers up. Well, this turns into a drill, okay? And this is one of my, this is one of those drills where I, I tell the kids, it's not about making the save. We did it in Louisville uh, at our clinic. We had three clinics there last week. I think that was last week. And, um, we had one, we, you know, one kid was just, and he was doing the splits all over the place. Well, yeah, he had a big smile. He made three saves in a row, but I was like, oh my God. Like, you know, the shooter probably could have scored a couple of times. So I'll show you uh, my university uh, female goalie. She's pretty good at, uh, at doing this. Here, just, this has to do with justice. And this is what you don't want in your goalies. And I showed this to the St. Louis Blues guy. I said, this was our, so you see how there's zero rotation there? That's what Evan, that's Evan Fitzpatrick's first practice of this. And there was no rotation, it was just this stuff. His shoulders were never square and he was putting the little blocker in front of the puck, okay? And holes, like it's disgusting, okay? But now it's night and day, okay? Um, so you even had to work with a guy who's drafting the NHL. So that's just to show you this is the bad stuff. Okay, where he always leaves the stick behind. And this was quick to correct, and you guys can correct this too. Nose and gloves, okay, nose and gloves. I think he does a little bit better here, but that's his strong side where you won't forget his stick, because his stick is coming. And that's what I was doing with a QMJHL goalie, just a little puck and we were going to one side, okay? It wasn't more complicated than that. So, uh, I'll find the one with Forget here. So, my drill, I told you, the first one, he's gonna move to the side, take a shot, then he's coming over here to shoot that puck, okay? Now, well, I had a goalie who was a little bit contrary, okay? And first thing he told me was, Dave, this doesn't happen in a game. It's the first thing he said, okay? So we traded him to Sherbrooke. No, but uh, <laughs> that's not what happened, but, okay? It was, uh, we did, but anyway. <laughs> it, uh, it was that he didn't, you know, for him to work on this, it didn't make any sense, but he, he also could not be told that there was anything wrong with him. But you see Evan Fitzpatrick, who, I, I have to tell you, a very humble guy for, you know, I, I had heard things. You know, a guy drafted in the second round of the NHL, you don't know what kind of person they're gonna be. Great guy, I think it helps, he's from Newfoundland. Um, but he, he's just been open to everything. And it's been a breath of fresh air compared to what I was working with before. But here's the drill. So Forget goes, okay, makes her save. She could have probably kept her leg closed there, okay. But she takes the time to rotate, okay. She's so good, that's probably why this shooter is probably not as good as her. And if she doesn't get drafted by the Canadien de Montreal, I'm going to be angry, so. but she always beats the shooter. And if I showed you older videos, like we had uh, guys come out and it was just, it's disgusting because they just, they freak out. They go here and then it's, ah, and they open up everything. It's staying calm. It comes back to the mental part of the game that's pretty tough for a goalie, okay? They've gotta be almost zen. Uh, but that's your recovery. Let's go back to that one. And then you can earn, add a third puck. You're gonna add a third puck to the other side and you're gonna come back to that first drill that you were doing. 
So you start with the movement one, two, three, and then you can do it with your shooter. So you're just starting to go to one and then two and drill number two, add a third puck. Don't get to the third puck. I haven't gotten to the third puck with Evan yet. Okay, we're not there yet. We're still trying to, every time he remembers this stuff. Okay. That's the only vintage photo I could find on Google. I tried to, to get on your mustache as much as I could. Okay. Yeah, I know, it's good. You can really see the definition of the mustache, though. That's really what I wanted to hit. But if Roland can do it, all you need is a, uh, is a goalie. Okay. Take the time. I am available the same way as Roland and I are available. Okay. You sit, hey Dave, je besoin de coupe de drill. I need a couple of drills. Come and see me. Okay. I'm hopefully going to have everything on the coach's uh, seminar on the uh, website. You'll be able to get all the stuff there. You reach out to me. I love to uh, talk clearly. Okay, uh, but you have no excuse. Okay, we you got small area games now that are going to take care of one of your goalies in the other end. Get the other assistant coach at the other end working with the goalie. We found you 15 minutes of time. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, David. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah, go ahead. What's the best warm up in your opinion? Be for that three minute warm up before a game. What's the best warm-up for the goalies, except just rifling pucks at them? There's not a good warm-up in three minutes for no, goalies. I know. That's the right. answer. Okay. So, it's just, so what do you suggest I would still, we do, not shoot on them? Or? I would take a goalie on the side. Yeah. You know, when, when I finished my practice, like uh, Fitzy last Tuesday, it was terrible. It was like, man, it was a terrible practice. Okay, so we're going to end with 40 shots, 10 in your glove, 10 in your blocker, 10 in your stick, 10 in your chest. You left the practice with 40 saves in a row. Up here, it's oh, confident. Forget the bad day. He's going to remember what we worked on. But So in your warm-up, maybe it's 40. I feel pretty good after 40 saves in a row. So if you can get your goalie into getting a bunch of shots, it's the same way. You see your goalie had a tough practice. Maybe uh, have a little bit of fun, but shoot on purpose. You want your goalie in confidence, OK? Not, it's not a guy to ruin. That's a conversation I have with Roland a lot, OK? Some coaches out there, oh, you, can't do, uh, you want him in confidence. When he's not in confidence, you're freaking out because you don't know how to get him back. I'll leave you with that. Thanks, Dave. I'm pretty sure the word retard is from the pound. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm Shaq. I'm Shaq. That's French for seal. Uh... I think we just use the word goalie now. Yes, yes. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay. One of the features of our program, our spring hockey program, is that we provide our goaltenders with clinics. Uh, and it's included in the registration fees. Three hours, uh, you'll get a memo. It's up to you to inform your goalies to be there. We'll make sure there's no conflict with your practice, but it's a nice feature. We also encourage you, the coaches, if you want to jump on the ice during the clinics, to listen, to learn more, and you can probably help do some shooting as well. So just uh, closing remarks here. Again, I want to thank you for all your work. Uh, this spring we'll have the most teams we've ever had. It's because of you guys out there working hard and believing in our program. Uh, just want to leave you with, I want this to be fun for you guys. Don't ever think you have to win. There's no bonus. I'm not going to give you $5,000 because I win a gold medal. And Roll and I talk about this all the time in the office. I sometimes feel that new coaches, guys are just starting out, that they may feel that by winning, that the parents think they're a good coach. Okay. This program is about development. Developing hockey skills and life skills to our kids. Making them better hockey players and better people. Okay. Everybody plays. Everybody learns. And again, be secure enough that if you're not winning, that you're not concerned about what the parents are thinking. Worry about the kids first. And the guys, I've coached my four kids from IP to every level. I've coached pro hockey with was tremendous pressure to win, university hockey. Just believe in yourself that you're doing the right thing for the kids all the time. And be organized. Show me a good manager, typically I'll show you a good coach. Show me a disorganized coach, and that's what you see his team is disorganized. On the ice or in a dress room. Being, details are important. You know, I'm sure you've been involved with hockey teams, maybe you weren't coaching, where the details were important, then parents start to bitch, parents get upset, ah, this, is, this is not organized. We work hard to make sure you run a professional program, you guys have to be organized. Dave mentioned, get your assistant coach involved on the ice, keep your parents informed, 
okay? So be organized, be a good manager, and that'll help you be a good coach in the long run. So again, this spring, if there's any issues, you let me know. I think you know by now that I'm pretty quick to respond. And my focus and Rome's focus is you, the coaches. We have a great staff in Moncton that looks after all the details. But if, you're, if your parents is just giving you a hard time, and you let us know. And I guarantee you, we, we support, we will support you 100%. Because I know when coaches are not supported, bad things happen. I've been involved in Meyer Hockey Associations that don't support their coaches, and then it becomes a frenzy from the parents. And I am not afraid to give a parent a refund check. We've done it many times. This is private hockey. One of the nice features of a private hockey is, you know what, we can do things quicker and do the right thing. We don't have to go to committees to see if a kid should be suspended or parents. So we have that ability to, if a parent is just wants to be negative and be a cancer, well, this is not right for you. It, it, it doesn't happen that often. But I just want you guys leaving here tonight knowing that I've got your back, we've got your back, we're going to support you. Because you know it only takes a few negative parents to ruin the whole thing. And that's one of the, so frustrating in Meyer Hockey uh, that you get those parents that want to be negative and negative. I think they think their kid's the next one, the next Crosby, the next Gretzky. Well, guess what? There's not that many of those kids around. Okay? And they, and they just don't get it. They don't understand what we're trying to do here. First is to teach life skills, respect, discipline, hard work, teamwork. That's what we're trying to teach our kids through sports. No better vehicle to teach that. So if some of these parents just don't want to come with the program, okay, but you guys have to be big enough to know maybe we're not, we're not doing things right too. Some parents, so we'll talk to them. Maybe there's things we're not doing right. But we've got your back. We want this to be a great experience for you. Enjoy it. Have fun. Don't go to the rink all stressed out and because you lost a game or just, you know what, it has to be enjoyable. So that's it, guys. Uh, again, keep checking your emails. There's a lot more information, memos to come out. Any questions or? For the pucks here, I'm just gonna, I'll put my stuff away and then my truck is parked right where the, uh, I'm probably not supposed to park there. I don't know how it is, so uh, is that all right? Can you? Uh, you probably do that too. Oh yeah, I'm not supposed to mention that, but yep. I parked that back. Three on three or the band program interfering with the UC? We will try and work around the three on three, which I love too, because it's great for the kids' skills, creativity, which Serge talked about. It's on Tuesdays and Thursday nights. There could be some conflicts where some kids may miss some, uh, but you know, if you can, if, if you can make it part of the routine. They, you could be practicing any, you could be some of the weeks practicing on Monday, Wednesday night, there could be a Thursday night, so there, there, there's probably gonna be some conflicts with the three on three. But you know what, even if you miss a few games, it's not that big a deal. Uh, we're looking for a few more coaches there for three on three as well. If you're, uh, so it starts. It goes April and May. It's it's, it's Tuesdays and Thursdays um, at the four place. I mentioned track suits. We we've got all the track suits ready it's for you guys. You guys should have been uh, communicating with our office if you need the track suits. Prospect.